There have been dozens of cases where YouTubers have done irreparable damage to their image with one single video, but we're going to explore seven more infamous recent cases, starting with Sunny V2, who uploaded a video that almost got him canceled. On April 10th, popular YouTuber Sunny V2 uploaded a highly controversial video titled Why Chris Will Soon Be a Nightmare for Mr. Beast. In the video, the commentary channel, with over 3 million subscribers, targeted a member of Mr. Beast crew, Chris Tyson, who just came out as being transgender. The first part of the video subtly hints at Chris's gradual feminine transformation before telling how this decision will impact Chris's family. Later, it dives deep into how the transformation will affect the dynamics of Mr. Beast's brand and crews. It felt as though there was an unaddressed elephant in the room, and therefore everybody was in their head, as opposed to being in the present moment enjoying each other's company. Maybe everybody was simply too busy opening packages, but Chris did make these bizarre jokes about Jimmy being female, making him incredibly uncomfortable. Oh my god, Jimmy, look, they drew you. Jimmy, they drew you so well. It looks just like you. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, it's Jimmy. How did fan art? This is what we were looking for. Be brave, be honest, be kind. This is Jimmy. That is my tagline. However, this video quickly took a controversial turn when it started taking strong opinions about Chris's feminine traits. It further exaggerated the issue by saying that Chris's transition wasn't a personal decision but a business one, eliminating the emotional and human factors. He went on to compare it to Hollywood movies, adding LGBTQ members to the cast to boost views. The YouTube community was in turmoil after Sunny V2 dropped this video. The video gained over 130,000 dislikes, and Sunny V2's subscriber count also began to plummet, losing 20,000 subscribers within a week. Many accused Sunny V2 of perpetuating dangerous stereotypes and promoting transphobia. After the video went viral, Mr. Beast called out Sunny V2 on Twitter, saying, Yeah, this is getting absurd. Chris isn't my nightmare, he's my friend, and things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. Other YouTubers and fellow creators, such as Hasanabi, XQC, lashed out at Sunny V2 too. The comments under the video were highly divisive, with comments having a go at him and his fanboys supporting him for sharing his true opinions. However, the backlash was so insane. This prompted the commentary channel to change the video title to How Will the Chris Tyson Situation Impact Mr. Beast? This video is the most controversial and disliked on the channel. Some people believe it's the beginning of Sunny V2's downfall, and there's no way he's getting out of it. Sunny V2 responded by saying nothing and went back to posting more videos as if nothing happened. Something Arak should have done too. Instead of digging himself a bigger hole by uploading a video to deflect after being exposed for faking his content, Arak has amassed a YouTube following of over 14 million subscribers in less than five years by taking on extreme challenges. To sustain his monumental progress, in December 2023, he decided to embark on a new epic challenge. He uploaded a video titled, I Have to Delete My Channel, where he explained the rules and conditions of his challenge. Starting December 1st, I'm going to be traveling around the entire globe, uploading 30 videos in 30 days and make the most of every second that we have left. Now, I've taken on tons of huge challenges in my time on YouTube, but this is something bigger that I don't even know if the Mafia is ready for. I'm going to be circling the globe over the next 30 days, ending in New York City on New Year's Eve. You guys are invited. But if I miss a day, my channel and all of my videos get deleted forever. You think I'm lying? I gave my personal laptop and my password to Mr. Beast, who is dying to delete my channel. I literally have his YouTube channel, and I promise I will delete it if he skips one day. Doesn't matter if I'm in the Swiss Alps, the deserts of Dubai, small town in India. I have to upload 30 videos in 30 days, or I lose everything. Due to the complexity of traveling around the world and uploading a video every day for 30 days, knowing Arak's usual high productions in his regular upload, Arak was setting exceptionally high expectations. Adding the looming possibility of Mr. Beast deleting his videos, this created a recipe for being one of Arak's most anticipated challenges. After releasing his trailer, Arak kept his promise and uploaded the first video titled, I crossed Ireland in a perfectly straight line, day one. The YouTuber then released another five episodes showing his team and him traveling across Europe in a straight line from Ireland to Italy. However, the problems will soon start when a YouTuber named Bisme exposes Arak for faking his 30-day challenge video. Another YouTuber named Soggy Serial released an in-depth video 
proving Iraq was faking his challenge video. Some shots, he claimed, proved it was filmed months before December. These shots included being able to see the date as December on Iraq's watch, them eating meat that expired in September, and being in Switzerland in December and not having any snow on the ground. They also met with several other people across the series, including a group of 50 competitive eaters in Australia. But one of these competitive eaters posted their own vlog from the event onto YouTube on November 18, which proves it was filmed in advance. Air Rack had to come clean and left a comment on Soggy Serial's YouTube video. Yo, appreciate the feedback. We are out shooting the series as we speak, but as I mentioned in the videos, some of them were shot before the series, so we could give ourselves a head start to edit and make the videos as good as possible. Biggest lesson is to more clearly communicate, uploading every day while I travel the world. I think I could have been more clear in the exact constraints for sure. Appreciate the feedback a bunch and hope you guys enjoy the back half of the series. The incident sent people down the air rack rabbit hole. On February 4, Soggy Serial made another video calling out air rack for many more malicious things, including doxing a pilot from his video flying to the angle, faking what appeared to be a charitable giveaway of money to a poor city, faking even more challenges, and treating people terribly. A little while later, the YouTuber Internet Anarchist exposed air rack to a bigger audience with a mini documentary titled this video will make you hate Iraq. After being accused of lying, doxing, and making fake donations, Iraq deleted both his videos flying to the angle and I crossed America in a perfectly straight line. However, this time, he kept quiet. Iraq's web of lies has finally caught up with him. He should have probably paid attention to what happened to Sniper Wolf, who got demonetized by YouTube for doxing another YouTuber and lying about it. Sniper Wolf aka Leah's journey to become one of YouTube's biggest creators has been filled with controversies. For as long as she has been on the platform, Leah has been making enemies out of anyone she interacts with. She denigrated, created false accusations, and filed copyright claims against any small YouTubers who dared to criticize her. Considering that her current internet presence is built on reaction content, and she often does not credit the people who originally posted the clips she reacts to, it's no wonder that so many people have spoken out against her. One of her famous detractors has been a creator named Jax Films, aka Jack Douglas, who built a reputation for calling out such a lazy reaction channel. On October 26, 2022, Jack uploaded a video titled SS Sniper Wolf in which he announced plans to parody Leah's reaction content with his own reaction channel, JJ Jack Films. Jack followed through on his promise and began making frequent uploads to his newest channel, which gained 50,000 subscribers by his third upload. However, Jack would take his criticisms a step further. Instead of just making fun of Leah on his parody channel, on the 29th of June 2023, Jack made a tweet directed at YouTube for promoting and rewarding Leah's questionable content. On the 26th of July 2023, Jack decided it was time to take a hard look at what Leah's low-quality effort content with his video, Let's Talk About Sniper Wolf. Sniper Wolf. You know the phrase, work smarter, not harder? Well, Sniper Wolf does neither. She just steals and doesn't credit anyone and has become a zillionaire in doing so. This is the official YouTube creators account on Twitter with over 6 million followers acknowledging Sniper Wolf as a keynote speaker at last month's VidCon, claiming she gets her ideas from her fans. The pressure was growing on all sides, and Leah would take things a step further and attack Jack's appearance with a now-deleted tweet. Jack's constant mocking of Leah will lead to more disturbing allegations being made against her business and her. In Leah's mind, this situation was Jack's fault. If he did not go around questioning her videos and turning the public opinion against her, then maybe all the skeletons in her closet would not have been revealed. Despite the situation being too late to change, Leah still wanted to stand up to Jack and regain some control in this messy situation. On the 13th of October 2023, Leah released an Instagram story that would have untold ramifications on Jack, his family, and potentially every creator on YouTube. She posted a poll on her over 5 million fans Instagram page asking, Should I go visit at Jack's Films? He lives 5 minutes away from my shoot. To make things worse, she showed up at Jack's Films house. She also filmed a video of herself outside and posted it on Instagram. Alright, right in front of your house. Come out. Come out and talk to me. He has food outside, so he should be out any minute now to pick it up. 
It's ice cream. On the 15th of October, Jack released a video statement on the incident, urging YouTube to de-platform Leah to prevent this type of behavior from her and other creators. YouTube needs to step in and take action. If this goes unpunished, then it sets a terrifying precedent that you can dox and stalk your critics so long as you have a big YouTube audience. If she truly wanted to talk with me, she could have done so through many other means. But there's one thing you don't do. You do not show up at someone's house. That's simply a line you do not cross. There is zero justification for this. Jack wasn't the only one calling for Leah to get banned from YouTube. The incident inspired a series of videos and posts from influencers and commentary channels, with public opinion largely being in favor of Douglas. YouTube first broke its silence on the situation by releasing a vague statement. We take safety on our platform very seriously. We're aware of the situation involving SS Sniper Wolf and are actively looking into it. With the public putting pressure on YouTube to take action, they had no choice but to respond. On the 20th of October, YouTube released an official statement, confirming Sniper Wolf has received a temporary monetization suspension per creator responsibility policies. Off-platform actions that put others' personal safety at risk harm our community, and the behavior on both sides isn't what we want on YT. Hoping everyone helps move this convo to a better place. Her other channel, Sniper Wolf's Top Videos, has also been demonetized. Some brands such as G Fuel distanced themselves from her brand. With Leah's huge source of income gone, she took to Twitter to do a last PR move and apologize to Jack. Let me start by saying I'm sorry for my recent actions. It is inexcusable. I'm sorry to Jack's Films, YouTube, the entire creator community, and my incredible fans for not being a better example of appropriate conflict resolution. I'd also like to thank YouTube for holding me accountable. I deserve it. Respect the decision and appreciate the opportunity to learn and grow from a true lapse in judgment. Leah's fans were quick to defend her, starting the hashtag SaveSniperWolf. However, the general sentiment on social media was that YouTube made the right decision in demonetizing her channel, and the punishment was not harsh enough. There's definitely no argument Sniper Wolf could make. Her out-of-control behavior is the reason for her downfall, something she shares with Colleen Ballinger, who experienced one of the worst downfalls in YouTube history. Colleen, also known as Miranda Sings, had a successful decade-long career in entertainment. She transitioned from performing at Disneyland to becoming a popular singer, actress, and comedian, selling out theaters, securing her own Netflix series, and earning multiple awards. During this time, Colleen amassed an impressive 20 million subscribers across her various YouTube channels. Her humor and style appealed greatly to a younger audience, who admired and looked up to her. However, beneath the surface of her comedic persona, there were troubling allegations. In April 2020, a former fan and intern named Adam McIntyre uploaded a video titled Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying, accusing Colleen of inappropriate behavior, including sending him lingerie when he was underage. Colleen responded to these allegations in May 2020, initially receiving support from her loyal fans. However, as time passed, more former fans came forward with similar accusations. Despite the mounting evidence against her, Colleen failed to address the situation appropriately. Instead, on June 29th, she released a video titled Hi on her vlog channel. In that video, Colleen addressed the controversy by singing and playing the ukulele. She appeared to deny the allegations as she sang. Years ago, I used to message my fans. Uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way. Within hours of the video going live, it was widely acknowledged as one of the worst responses and apology videos in YouTube history, with over 17 million views. The song has also inspired a wave of memes and parodies in which people mock the cringy and tone-deaf nature of the video. Even Adam McIntyre responded with his own song, playing a ukulele and responding to Ballinger's song line by line. The fallout from this controversy was devastating for Colleen's career. From June to August, she lost over 100,000 subscribers and saw no positive growth. Several of her channels saw a significant decline in engagement. She was forced to cancel a planned tour in 2023, and some brands distanced themselves from her brand. Despite attempting to return to the internet as if nothing had happened, Colleen was met with continued backlash. 
serving as a reminder that her actions had not been forgotten. While Colleen Ballinger has still some support after her apology video, the same could not be said about Gerard the Completionist who lost all his reputation after uploading a controversial apology video that threatened other creators with legal actions. Nobody had a bad word to say about Gerard. He was always seen as a friendly and outgoing guy. However, his fun-loving image will be questioned when his charity organization, the Open Hand Foundation, came under scrutiny by Carl Jobs and Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers. They revealed that the foundation hadn't distributed any of the $600,000 raised from viewers during Gerard's annual indie fundraiser or from the foundation's golf tournaments, as Gerard claimed. This led to a heated exchange between Madahar, Carl, and Gerard. Initially, public opinion remained neutral, awaiting more evidence. However, Gerard's official response, released on December 9, 2023, where he admitted lack of transparency but denied illegal actions, didn't sit well with viewers. In the video titled My Response, he apologized to his viewers and shared his side of the story. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed that I was not more straightforward regarding the Foundation's timeline for making donations and that I made statements potentially implying donations were made when they had not yet been. It took too long for clear action to occur and I apologize for all of this, but such inaction was not done for any selfish or malicious reasons. His attempt to gain sympathy by mentioning his deceased mom's names and threatening legal action backfired and resulted in a lot of people criticizing and disliking the video. The comments under the video were just as brutal. Someone left this as a comment. The fact that this man posted his mom's autopsy report on the internet is so foul. Another person said this, Achievement unlocked, gaslight and threatened community while having no ground to stand on. This resulted in Carl further exposing him and denying any of his claims by releasing their full Discord call, which proves Gerard was saying different things when initially confronted. The last thing I want to do is ruin the legacy of my family, of my mom and her memory, especially because this is such a personal thing for the last 25 years of my life. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be like, do you guys want money to help me hide this? It's not this is at all. I'm just asking from a humanity perspective of like, if I am the target of this, I have 20 mouths to feed. I have sponsors. I have a business. I'm trying to make video games. I'm trying to get out of content creation so I don't have to worry about YouTube anymore and, and do better things in the world. And I just know because of my track record of things like G4 exploding, me being friends with John Tron when he was a racist, uh, you know, I've been a part of like, you know, pro Jared, like, Pulling one yeah. thread about the charity thing is going to upheave my entire life in a way that scares the living crap out of me. And I don't want to go home tonight and tell everyone, hey, there is a gigantic thing coming to claim my career and you all have to close down and find somewhere else to do. I know this is me to say this. I'm not trying to ask for sympathy or anything, but this kind of stuff I mean, I've been following your guys' stuff for years. The stuff with Billy Mitchell, Carl, the stuff that you've done, Muto, with tons of content creators over the years. Like, mm -hmm. there's no nuance to this. People are going to see this, and they're going to immediately go, that Gerard guy who's been nice to a bunch of people actually isn't very nice overall. Him. Let's get rid of him. After the release of that Discord call, Gerard not only lost the trust of his viewers, but also over 80,000 subscribers, and his latest videos received significant dislikes. In the end, Gerard could not survive his first major controversy. Therefore, Gerard should have gotten some advice from True Jordy, who managed to stop the damage done to his reputation after making a silly joke on a live video. True Jordy, aka Brian Davis, is an English YouTuber who became well known after his first video, A True Jordy's View on Nile Ranger, went viral. The YouTuber first focused on uploading Premier League games and reviewing the football weekend actions. He has since covered a wide range of sports and trending news. He has built up a following of over 3 million subscribers across his three YouTube channels and podcasts. Furthermore, he became famous for speaking his mind on any issue without any filter, which landed him in trouble several times and caused arguments with famous people such as Logan Paul and Conor McGregor. However, a couple of years ago, one argument completely damaged True Geordie's brand and reputation. True Geordie and Andrew Tate's disagreement started when True Geordie insulted on Twitter the woman working for Tate's webcam company. 
Tate defended the woman, saying it was wrong to insult people you don't know. This made Tate angry, and he challenged Drew Jordy to a boxing match. Later, Tate got hold of screenshots showing True Jordy and his partner's intimate messages. Tate mentioned this during an interview, which further fueled their disagreement. So when the opportunity came up during Tate's disturbing private allegations and eventual arrest, True Jordy played the investigator, letting viewers in on the news as it unfolded. So I'll leave it at that. Um, obviously, his defenders will be there in the comments, battling hard, defending the soldier of the light. True Jordy even got a Romanian ex-convict on his show to talk about how corrupt the Romanian justice system was and how Tate may want to bribe his way out of prison. I'll start off with what the outside uh, world are saying about this Romanian justice system. A lot of people, you know, are wondering what it'll be like for him. Is it corrupt? Can he, can he just pay his way out of this situation? Andrew Tate himself said, I'm going there because the laws are relaxed. But all that was nothing compared to what True Geordie would do on November 2022. Even though Tate seemed to be doing a good thing, like finding religion, True Geordie couldn't find a place in his heart to let the man have the win. So during a live stream, when a fan asked if True Geordie would fight Tate, he said this. Are you fighting Andrew Tate? Mate, and oh, come on. Andrew Tate got God on his side oh, now. Man. There's no way Brian would win that. Um, although I would gladly blow myself up and take that f back with us. I'm just saying, if he really wants to prove it, do, do the right thing. <laughs> Let's see how about that life you really are. As, yes, although, yeah, not all Muslims. The internet was set on fire. Islamophobic, terrible person became True Geordie's new media tags. Due to that joke, True Geordie lost his sponsorship deals with Gymshark, MyProtein, and Poker Stars. Then got banned from Twitch. He uploaded a first video apology which was not very well received because most people felt it wasn't genuine. He then uploaded a second one which was better received. Despite this apology, the cascade didn't stop there. Lawrence, his friend and co-host for the True Geordie channel and the kickoff, the football commentary podcast, left. The other members of his football podcast, including Rory, Bouvet, and Adam, also left to start a new channel only a few months after the Islamophobia controversy. You guessed it, it's a football commentary channel, a straight-up copy of the kickoff. They christened it The Club, a club of traitors, more like. Even True Geordie doesn't see them ever reconciling. True Geordie was able to overcome this hiccup and still maintain some kind of popularity on YouTube up until this day. However, the same cannot be said about Jack Doherty, who became the most hated YouTuber on the platform after he uploaded a video of him harassing a random stranger on the streets. Initially, when Jack first started his YouTube journey in July 2016, it wasn't always about causing drama. It was about making pranks and cool challenges videos, like any teenager his age will do. His first big video was in November of that year, where he went trick-or-treating for Halloween. His newly gained popularity will lead his channel to experience growth in his subscriber count and views. To keep growing, Jack quickly understood he had to jump on anything going viral like fidget spinners and these infamous 3am challenges. He was good at knowing what people liked and made different kinds of videos to keep them interested. But what made him stand out were the crazy things he did in public places, like stand up in front of cops or ruining a fashion show. One video where he tried not to get kicked out of Walmart while spilling paint was a big hit. Since there were no real consequences and the videos got millions of views, that was the fuel Jack needed to make his content more controversial and dangerous. Many of his public challenges have seen him kicked out of places, and as he revealed in one video, he's been banned from Walmart stores across the country after filming one too many disruptive videos on their premises. Doherty's Walmart escapades haven't been the only thing getting him into trouble over the years, though. Far from it. In March 2018, Doherty made headlines on YouTube by donating $1,000 to Ninja, a famous Fortnite player, as a prank. He later posted a video claiming to expose Ninja, sparking controversy and leading to backlash from viewers after screenshots of private messages were shared. The whole debacle earned him the title of Clout Chaser, someone who was willing to do anything for views. But Jack did not learn his lesson and kept pushing the boundaries, getting in all sorts of trouble just to boost his engagement. From hacking and disrupting Zoom school classes to stealing his brother's car, this whole saga will lead to him appearing on Dr. Phil's show, where he dismissed anyone who confronted him about his dangerous pranks. 
After the show, he tried to apologize, but said he only did it for attention. This only served to intensify the negativity surrounding Jack's image. Around 2021, his channel was losing momentum, so he decided to change his strategy by focusing on short clickbait content and his only fan business. This decision paid off and revived Jack's channel, but things will deteriorate the following year. In 2023, Jack decided to turn his multi-million mansion into a live stream party event for influencers. It seemed like a good idea because drama equals views and money for Jack. However, things quickly got out of control. The events that unfolded during these live streams were unexpected but were a massive hit with Jack's audience. So Jack decided to keep giving people what they wanted. By September 2023, Jack was seen sticking a microphone in a security guard's face and then having his bodyguard confront the security guard when things got heated. In a separate video uploaded on Kick, Jack is seen harassing random people on the streets for views. At this point, these videos created the perfect storm for everyone to pile criticism on Jack. I actually have skin in this game. Just like an 80s action movie tagline, this time it's personal. When I say he is insufferable to be around, I'm not just basing that off of the videos I see of him. I actually know Jack Doherty in real life. In fact, he was in one of my videos four years ago, but you probably didn't know that because I did my absolute best to edit him out of it. Since the release of these clips, almost every week, someone makes a video about Jack Doherty with a negative tone to it, an exposed video. Jack Doherty must be stopped. Jack Doherty is the worst YouTuber. People have been so angered by his childish behavior that a petition was also created to ban him permanently from Kick. So many people make so many videos that get so many views, but Jack never responds. However, it seems Jack's reputation in real life is also in tatters due to the way he behaves. One ex-member of his crew revealed that everybody around Jack Doherty hates him and the content he produces. Everyone sees the lavish lifestyle, the cars, the girls, the jewelry, the clothes. He has it all when it comes to the surface. But when you actually dig deeper and see what he has to do in order to live the lifestyle he has, most people wouldn't trade what they are doing for him, especially knowing that he wakes up, he pops all day, every day in order to function. And if he doesn't, he doesn't know how to act. He can't get out of bed. And most people will never see that side of him. They only see how good everything is. But when you actually break it down, no one around him likes him. His brother doesn't like him. Almost everyone in that house says they hate him. But when it comes to being in there, they stay because money makes the world go round. However, despite all these controversies, Jack Doherty has no plan to stop anytime soon. So we just wait when he will be canceled for good. I don't really have much to worry about. I kind of set myself up in the best way possible, but still, I don't think that's even enough right now. I still want to keep going because, you know, obviously the more money you make, the more your lifestyle costs and the more you want and you, know, you just always want more.